Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Sayati zamanun ala ummati. There shall come a time upon my ummah, upon the people who follow me, when their prayers are not prayed correctly. And when high buildings spread in every place, when people swear in the name of Allah a lot about everything without fulfilling their oath, people curse each other a lot. Bribery and adultery prevails. People neglect the hereafter in order to buy the luxuries of this world in exchange for the hereafter. So people become materialistic. The Prophet وسلم, said, فَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ ذَلِكَ فَالنَّجَاةَ النَّجَاةَ If you see this happening in your time, then seek refuge, seek refuge. Find a solution to get away from all of this. It's not an easy solution, but you need to stay away from all this. In one other hadith, a man said, Ya Rasulullah, what is seeking refuge? How do I seek protection? What do you mean by that? And Rasul Sallallahu gave an expression like this. He said, by adhering to your house and keeping your mouth shut and hold your tongue and hand from doing unlawful until death comes to you. There's going to come a time even worse than this one, brothers and sisters, where a person becomes so confused about what is happening in the world, so deluded by everything that they see and hear, that they're not going to know what to do and where to go and who to stand with except to stay away from things, even if they mean sitting at home, abstaining from all of this because there's not much they can do anymore. They want to do good, but where do they go? They want to avoid the bad, but it's all the way, all around. I heard a lot of young people say to me now, why does Islam say everything is haram, haram, haram? This is not true. Islam does not say everything is haram. But when there's so much haram around us and corruption, Islam looks like it's forbidden everything. The hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all these hadiths can be found in Sahih Muslim and Bukhari, Tirmidhi, Abu Dawood. These are called the six books of hadith, Numajah and Nisa'i. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us, prayers are not prayed correctly. People pray without really meaning to pray anymore. Their five daily salat are done in a hurry, in a rush, with neglect. Uh, no importance is taken to them. If money comes in the way, the prayer is lost. The prayer is delayed. If a boy wants to meet a girl to chat her up and it's time for salat, he'll ignore the salat. If there is something of worldly benefit to them, the salat becomes the last thing on their mind. One brother said to me once, Brother, I don't pray Jumu'ah because I work. He said, have you tried to seek time off? He said, no, because Islam says to me that I have to look after my family. The response to that is obvious. If it wasn't for Allah providing you with this family, you wouldn't have a family aslan in the beginning. When you turn away from Allah and become ungrateful to Him and rely on other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah describes this type of family like the family of the spider in the Quran. It falls apart. It's not stable. Then he said, high buildings are spread everywhere. This hadith also comes in a different manner. When Jibreel alayhi salam once entered, he sat as a man. And Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu says, we saw this man enter one time. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi was sitting with us in the masjid. And this man who entered, he had a very black beard with very black hair and a very white thawb, clothing. He did not look like he was traveling because you couldn't see any dust on his clothing and none of us knew him. So who was this man? They didn't have airplanes in those days and cars to travel very quickly. And he sat to the Prophet ﷺ very respectfully. He asked him several questions. And the last of the questions he asked him was this, Mata sa'a? When is the last hour? And at every time he would say to him, you are truthful, you are truthful. They thought, how come he's asking him questions and saying that you, he is truthful when he's the questioner? And then he's telling him that you've said the truth. As though he is testing him. In the end he said, when is the last hour going to come? When's the world going to end? And he said, the questioner who is asking me, or the person you are asking, is no more knowledgeable about its hour, about its time than the questioner. Meaning you and I don't know. I don't know any better than you. 
So we asked him, what are its signs, some of its signs, when it comes close? And he mentioned two things, very important. أن تلد الأمة ربتها When the mother, the servant of Allah, is one meaning, is probably the most likely meaning. When the mother gives birth to her daughter or son, and this daughter becomes like a boss, a master over her, as if her mother is her slave. In another hadith, Rasul said, when the son, when the son, the boy, son, he chooses his friend closer and distances his father away. This time wasn't, never existed in their days. Even among the Christians and the Jews, this didn't exist. It was a time that was very unusual to the people. That the mother will give birth to her daughter who when she grows up, she acts like she's the master and boss over her own mother. And their parents, in other words. And you will see the destitute barefooted Bedouins that will be building very high towers in the sky, skyscrapers. Today we see this, many signs of this everywhere. The Bedouins are actually today in the Emirates, places like the Qatar. Now they're actually competing in this. Yatatawaluna fil bunyan means that they will be competing in making high towers. Who will make the higher tower than the other person? So materialism and uh, technology becomes the main motive of people in competing for. And if you look at society today, you will see that when people say we are an advanced society, we don't live in the caves anymore, what they're trying to tell us is that now we are more intelligent. With what? What are we more advanced in? Rasul said, يَتَطَاوَلُونَ فِي الْبُنْيَانِ They'll be competing about who can make the highest buildings, high rises. Meaning they'll compete with their technology, with their sophisticated engineering and building. What is so special about an advanced society who knows how to build machines or buildings or send satellites into space or build rockets or build atom bombs? The only thing I can think about is to kill people, to destroy the poor, to show off in worldly possessions for mere greed and power the way that Iblis used to show to Adam when he said, I am better than him, you created me from fire and you created him from soil and I will lead all of them astray and make them go into hellfire with me. Same thing. So we'll be competing with technology. But as for modesty, as for character, as for trust, as for family, as for worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as for uh, justice, as for leadership in justice looking after people, as for you know, the uh, value of human life, of children looking after the orphans, the poor, the needy, the desperate, all of this will be lost. No one will be thinking about it. In fact, let me tell you something. In America, they make $50 billion on pharmaceutical products, on medicine alone. $50 billion on medicine. What does this mean? What is happening to the world? $50 billion annually of profit on medicine. These are people who are getting ill and sick. Are people getting more sicker and ill? Are there people pumping in these diseases? Are, 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 are people denying medicine to these people? Why are they making the medicine so extremely expensive? Innocent people are being killed because medicine is too expensive. People are after capitalism just to make money and more money and to climb high and rise high throughout the world. 70-80% of people are surviving on about 40 cents a day. What is happening to the world we live in? Our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us, people will compete for worldly possessions, for technology, and they will say, as though he is saying, society will base its advancement on their technology. Whatever happened to the morals, justice, equity, treatment of others, the rights of others, modesty, this is what values a society, not how nice you can make things and kill people with it. Our Rasul Sallallahu said, people will swear oath by Allah on false things. So you come to buy and people will use the religion to convince you to buy their product. By swearing by Allah's name, it only costs them this much, for example. Our Rasul Sallallahu tells us that they will curse Allah. La'an. And Rasul Sallallahu said, people will curse their own fathers. 
They said, Ya Rasulullah, who curses his own father? He said, there will come a time where people will curse, you will curse their father and so they will curse your father in return. So what, what is the meaning of this? It means that people no longer value parenthood. People no longer value the relationships of people with others. They'll wipe them off, they'll curse them, they'll have hatred and people will only think about themselves. Rasul Sallallahu tells us that bribery and adultery will, be, will prevail. Prevail. You know what prevail means? Yefsha. Meaning it becomes the norm everywhere. And he even said that there will come a time where a person will be walking down the street and they will see a man and a woman committing acts of adultery and fornication before everyone's eyes. Not afraid of the criticism. And they will say, well, at least you could have just moved aside so that we can walk past, you know. Just make some room. It's okay what you're doing. It looks cute, but we just want to walk. That's all, you know. But keep going. Subhanallah. This means that modesty and morality dies out completely throughout the world. Whether they are in the Muslim lands or the non-Muslim lands. Brothers and sisters, I don't want to talk too much about what is happening there. But if you do your research, you will find that in both worlds, I don't want to name countries so that I don't find, sound racist, but it is happening double, triple. Tourists go from Western countries to these particular countries in order to have a great time with their lust, temptations, alcohol, and so on and so forth. It's happening. Adultery becomes so prevailed that husband and wife divide and they divorce and children become, you know, to sort of live on their own and morality is gone. Because they cannot control their lusts and people will be afraid of getting married because they don't want to commit. They cannot control their desires. The man still wants to sleep around, the woman wants to sleep around. Nowadays, it's very difficult to find someone to identify you as a husband and wife. They say, partner. Is this your partner? People are afraid to say husband and wife. Why? Because hardly anyone wants to get married anymore. So they say, partner. Oh, we respect the fact that you don't want to get married and commit and value that partner. People neglect the hereafter in order to buy commodity from this world. They sell the hereafter for this world. And this is when a person neglects their worship, neglects the hereafter, and they focus on what they can see only in this world. Their clothing becomes extravagant. Their food, they live to eat. Their coffee, they live to drink coffee. They love to display themselves with their ornaments only to show off their beauty to the people whom they're not meant to show it off to. Yani the men and the women, they begin to display themselves in front of the opposite gender and forget about their wives and their husbands whom they should be sharing this beauty with. And the Prophet wasallam said, I saw in hellfire. Brothers and sisters, I'm just quoting the facts. I'm not trying to put anything on anyone. Just the facts of what the Prophet Sallallahu said. And Prophet Sallallahu when he spoke, he spoke out of sorrow and sadness about the future of what will happen to his ummah. Because when he was in his last breath, Sir Rasul Sallallahu said to his ummah, Please, I have left you on the clear white page. Its day, its night is as clear as its day. Do not swerve away from it. And he recited Allah's verse, Today I have perfected your religion for you and completed my favor upon you and am pleased with Islam submission to God as your religion. And Rasul Sallallahu said, Oh Allah, bear witness I have informed. I have informed. He was sad. What is he saying? I saw in hellfire a group of women, for example, whom I've never seen the likes of before. Meaning of the future. They are dressed but undressed. They walk in a seductive manner. Ma'ilatim mumilat. And they do fashions upon their heads in order to, in a type that attracts attention. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, this is something of the future. He's never seen the likes of before, not among the Romans, the Byzantines of his time. He did not see them among the Persians of his time. He did not see them among the Mushrikeen of his time, or among the Muslims of his time. This is something which the humans begin to do, at large, Muslim, non-Muslim. And he said, among my ummah, from my nation, subhanallah, and how often do we find young people imitating and copying who? Celebrities. Where Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did tell us that there will come a time when upon my ummah they will begin to follow them step by step, foot by foot, that if they were to enter the hole of a lizard, they will follow them. 
حتى ولو دخلوا جحر ضب لدخلتموه قالوا اليهود والنصارى يا رسول الله قال فمن They said, O Messenger of Allah, do you mean that we will be following step by step the customs and traditions and morals of the Christians and Jews of that time? He said, yes, who else? The Romans will be the largest in number and power and influence. This is a hadith from the Prophet you find it in Sahih Muslim, that the Romans, the Romans in those days used to call them a Rum. A Rum, you know, means today something like the Euro, basically the Europeans of today. That we, they will be the larger amount, they will have the most influence on people, such as Hollywood, such as, you know, uh, Britain and France and all those other places. They will have influence on people, on my ummah, he said. And you will follow them step by step. Not, not, any, some things are good, but majority is bad. Their customs and morals. What do we see in our young people? Whether they are in the Arab countries or outside, in the Muslim countries or outside, in the Western countries or beyond it, the Muslim youth, look at them. What kind of things do you like to dress in? What kind of people do you imitate? Who do you really want to be like? Really. And don't fool yourself. Who do you really want to be like? And then some of them feel guilty today to the point where they try to justify things like uh, that the Prophet has forbidden and turn it into a religious thing, such as tattooing. I've seen young people tattooing now on themselves, ayat of the Qur'an. The name of Allah. And they say, you know, I've tattooed it because I want my Lord to know this is who I am. This is my identity. But they don't pray. They're drinking. They're out neglecting themselves, staying up all night, neglecting their salat, neglecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is this? Copying and imitating the wrong people. Our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us. He said, إن بين يدي الساعة كقطع من الليل المظلم. Before the end of time, you will see this prevailing sign. What is it? There will be afflictions, 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 trials, tests of hardship. Afflictions that are like smoke filling the air, darkness with dark clouds above you. And it will weaken the heart of a person just like his body weakens. In the morning he is a believer and by the evening he becomes a disbeliever. And in the evening he is a believer and by the morning he is a disbeliever. So much fitan, confusion, deception, lies. A person in the evening is a believer. By the morning they went on the internet and it confused everything about their religion to the point where they become atheists. They become something other than their own religion. We live in this time today. How many times I get this question now from young people? I never used to get them, you know, a few years back. How do I know if my religion is the correct one? You know, I've been debating with this atheist and wallah, I don't know what to answer. I'm thinking of becoming an atheist myself. Yes. Have you heard about the Muslim Gay Society? There's one in Sydney, there's one in America, and there's one in London. The one in America is very old, the oldest one. The one in London is second oldest. There is a lesbian mosque and a male gay mosque. Now, Ar Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, you will have a, before the end of time, a immatum mudillun. You will have leaders who will lead you astray. In America, there is a masjid. Its imam is a woman who gives the khutbah and she leads the men and women in salat. Even a woman makes the adhan. And the men say takbir when they hear her khutbah. Takbir about what, I wonder? Because this is an abomination of what the Prophet ﷺ taught us. There is equality between man and women. And Rasul ﷺ, the Quran already made it. Allahu Akbar but in an appropriate manner. A way that there is that shows you self-respect, teaches you self-respect. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi tells us these people who wake up in the morning believers and by the end of the night they are disbelievers. He said, The reason is that they sell their character, their morals and their religion because of a gain of this world. Lust, desire, money, a car, fame, fortune, whatever, you name. 
Rasul Sallallahu said, a time shall come when a person is given insight in the daytime. So he's very aware. He can tell you so many things about everything of the world. But in the evening, he commits every sin under the sun, takes bribes, become dishonest, etc., etc., etc. People are very good in front of people. But when you are alone in secret, they break every sin under the sun, as though Allah is not watching them. This is hypocrisy. And we live in a world of hypocrisy. Brothers and sisters, I want to ask you a question. Think about this. If you take the whole world, it is made up of people. Take away the disbelievers if you don't want them there. And count the Muslims alone, for example. Then the Muslims are made up of nations. These nations are made up of states. These states are made up of communities. The communities are made up of families and the families are made up of units of families. Each unit of family is made up of members. Unit members, one, a son, a daughter, sons, daughters, father, mother. When this individual and the next individual, the third individual, all these one individuals become hypocrites and corrupt their state, what happens? The whole community is automatically corrupt. The whole state is already automatically corrupt. Then the nation and then the world. More than one point something billion Muslims in the world. And look at our state. Look at our state. What were the images we saw? What Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells detrimental hadith wallahi. He said, لا خير فيكم إذا فسد أهل الشام. There is no good in you, O Muslims, when the day comes that the people of Sham are corrupt. Their state is corrupt. They're neglected. Their state is destruction. There is no good in you. As though saying, Sham is the heart of you. And if its people are not looked after anymore, what is wrong with the Ummah of the Muslims of the world? Something is terribly, terribly wrong. We can blame the leaders. And Rasul Sallallahu did say that there will come a time when you will have leaders who are form of, in the form of dictatorship and they are unjust and they will lead you in tyranny. And he also said, when the time comes, when the amana, the trust is given to the person who cannot hold it and the person who is a liar is believed and the believing and the person who is trustworthy is said to be a liar. Yes, it's going to come. But what about you and me who are not leaders? We have a responsibility first for, my, for yourself. Are you fulfilling that responsibility by being a person obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a person fulfilling your character, a person fulfilling your deen in the proper manner, or are you a hypocrite in the day good, in the night sinful? In, your, in a person's face, mashaAllah, behind his back, depending on who's around me. Listen to this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He said, the last hour will not come until you find yourself that if you were among 20 young men, more or less, and you check their faces, you look at them all, and you are a believer, you're a good believer, and you looked at you know, a number of 20 or more or less, and found out that none of them fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it is time for the hour. What is he saying? He's saying when you see young men, there are many of them, and they're in large numbers together, hanging out in certain places or going together, and you cannot see any signs of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their faces as a whole, then wait for the last hour to come. We're talking about from the Ummah of the Prophet ﷺ. What does this mean? In the nightclubs, they go in groups. In mixed weddings, singing and dancing, they're in groups. Going out to meet two or three girls, they're in groups. A concert happens where a singer comes along or a dancer or whatever, and they go in groups. Not one or two, in groups. They go to commit fahisha. They go to, you know, have argila all night until fajr time neglecting the Maghrib prayer, neglecting the Isha prayer, neglecting the Fajr prayer, because as soon as they get home, they're too tired. They've got to give their body rights. So these young people full of energy and muscles and brains and, and strength, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put you as the leaders of this ummah, you are the responsible people, wasting their time, wasting their bodies, wasting their energy, wasting their youth, wasting their health. On what? On just fulfilling the desires of this body and smoking things that kill you burning their money on things that kill them. Everywhere in the world they exist, brothers and sisters. Ar Rasul Sallallahu said, when you see this, then await for the last hour to come. And he said, when there will be more evil people 
persons than the good ones to the point when, listen to this, when the believers will hide themselves. يَسْتَخْفِي مِنْهُمُ الْمُؤْمِنْ كَمَا يَسْتَخْفِي الْمُنَافِقُ فِينَ الْيَوْمِ The believers will hide themselves too ashamed or too embarrassed or too scared to show themselves that they are believers just like the way Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said just like the way hypocrites today hide themselves hypocrites the believers will hide themselves because of the amount of any corruption that's out there Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam now said Al-Mahdi the awaited Mahdi who will lead the Ummah of Islam his name is Muhammad son of Abdullah will come out and he will lead the Muslim Ummah of the world into justice so the first people in Mahdi will fight are Arabs who are under the banner of Islam but they've erred gone wrong as they are approaching a group of them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the earth swallow them they all die